So we've been fighting with our gate and our security cameras for a while. We did have somebody come on our property, um, so we decided to get a little bit more serious about it. <laughs> Timing of things on YouTube is funny how everybody seems to come up with the same topic. So we had already been working on this a little bit before the topic seemed to pop up in everybody's thread, but we're working on a camera system that'll help with perimeter security and fixing our gate system. We went with Airstone, which I highly recommend for whole farm Wi-Fi. Literally covers all the way out to the front gate, 900 to 1,000 feet away, with full signal Wi-Fi. We weren't sure how that was going to work, so I decided to get these accessory Bing Fu Wi-Fi extending antennas. A word of caution. First, they did not increase the decibels of the Wi-Fi better than the ones that came with the Foscam cameras. And second, there's a minor difference in all of these connectors. Don't ask me for the part number, I'll, I'll try to put them in later. But there's no male pin in there, and the Foscam camera looks identical. It's also a female coax. So I had to go find these adapters that had a male pin sticking out in the center of the coax on both sides then. Not hard to find, just got to do some hunting research and figure out the part numbers you're looking for. But even after going through the trouble of hooking these up, again, the decibels of Wi-Fi at the front gate were not improved with these generic antennas. Do a little research and development, maybe buy a couple of these cheap things and test them out, see if they help you or not. The biggest benefit for these is like when we're inside a metal building, I can put the antenna outside the metal building. It's magnetic and it has some stick tape that comes with it. But as far as boosting Wi-Fi signal by itself, n not a good job. Not at all. I wanted to show you. Um, I found these. I was showed these by a, by a guy that was doing some low voltage work. I'd never seen them, so I thought you should see them. These are waterproof. And this is just a, a, a company we ordered off online. They probably make better ones. I just wanted to try them out after watching them once. So you take, um, let me grab the heat. You can take a cigarette lighter or a torch, but you put your wire ends together, slide this over so your two wire ends are already twisted in the middle of that barrel, and then you hit this with heat, and that small plug of solder melts and solders the wire, and these two outer plugs close. They swell up and close and waterproof the connection all in one shot. And they have different sizes and there's different kits. Uh, this company, honestly, they're a little thin. I've had a couple issues where it feels like it's letting the wire break through the wall. But I wanted to try them out before I, I devoted. Now I'm going to look for a higher end brand of those. Um, so we're going to be just kind of messing around with some stuff, messing with some electronics, messing with the security system, messing with the front gate. I'm going to probably just do an update video. We've had a lot going on. We've been really busy and everybody's been really tired. Um, it's just been a strange year and uh, it'll be a later update to explain all of that once we see how this all pans out. But for now, I'm going to work on this stuff, so be off and on shots of that. Bear with me on the voiceovers. If there's a slight audio change, indoor versus outdoor. So we're trying to make security pods, solar powered, using Foscam cameras. We bought an NVR kit that we're going to try in one of our barns to watch the animals and the driveway approach in front of the barn. So we ordered a handful of stuff and then jimmied up some scrap metal parts. <laughs> I mean scrap metal. It's what we had laying around trying to make a stand that'll hold the battery, the solar panels, uh, our antennas that we thought we needed, and at least a camera or two. So I took an old computer box and we waterproofed it and welded it up. Again, just farm scrap, whatever we had laying around, just research and development trying to get this working. You can see our first version. It's a little top heavy, and I'm going to warn you, and I'll say it again later in the video. If the wind hits this and it wobbles back and forth, it just sets the motion detectors off on your cameras. Needed to make a way of spinning the 
solar panels up to 360 degrees so no matter what way we set the pod no matter where we set them on the farm we can turn and point them south and get the solar panels to get maximum light wired it all up pretty straightforward the solar panel kits um, those are 250 watts so it's a hundred watt kit off of Amazon came with its own charge controller for 12 volts that was a nice charge controller that it came with had some options for programming its lower limits etc the box on this which is our second version is also on Amazon it fits the battery charge controller and any other small electronics on this webbing that's in the back of the box so you can screw right to the back again using scrap metal so it was a little whippy we went with airstone for a whole farm Wi-Fi we have a receiver for the second barn that gives us direct Ethernet also. So today's, uh, today's goal is to fix our electric gate. We're going to do some changes, see if we can resurrect this thing from the dead. If not, we'll be getting a different controller and I'll tell you more about it. We had originally gone with a Toppins gate controller. We couldn't get it working again. They were helpful. They sent us a new driveway magnet exit sensor a new control for it it just never worked right it opened itself automatically after two hours and this is when we still had this gate set to auto close we went with uh, the mighty mule system because their wi-fi could work back at the house and range an antenna out to the gate the other systems all seem to need 110 volts at the gate and that's where their wi-fi controller would sit we don't have it we're solar powered out there but we wanted to have the ability to use our smartphones, Wi-Fi, to be able to open and close a gate from wherever we were, tied into the Wi-Fi cameras that we could see from wherever we were. So initially this is me trying to get the Toppins system back up and running. We'll abandon this. We, we tried it. It didn't work. It's a 24 volt system also. It, it, it just never came back to life. You're going to see me struggle with this. That's just putting it all back together, wiring in their system. Just a generic plastic box I found. It's all crushed up in there, including their gate controller. The thing never worked. So this is us taking down the old system. I'm going to pull the solar panels off. We'll wind up putting up a single 50-watt solar panel that works just fine had to make a new mount for the single panel but I can tell you that uh, this mighty mule system works pretty good the only issue I'm having is they claim to have a half mile range on their Wi-Fi transmitter it's intermittent right now we're at 900 feet maybe a thousand out here at the gate so we're going to move it down a little bit closer because we have whole farm Wi-Fi. I can pick up that Wi-Fi just about anywhere along that stretch, hook it to the barn, and then have its antenna still repeat out to the gate. Also had to make a uh, entrance keypad post. Thought about this a lot. We were going to do a wooden post with an extension off of it, but I had this two by two box it's about eighth inch thick put a really heavy plate on it I was able to hammer this down into the ground using a sledgehammer so it got about two three feet in the ground stabilized really nicely you'll see us use that a little bit later I'm gonna try to give you guys a full walkthrough of everything up and running I love this needle scaler needle gun air powered just knocks the scale off your welds really quickly. This is the heavy plate I put on the top. I just had some leftover scrap. This protected the 2x2 tube when we were sledgehammering it down. I've been switching back and forth between stick welding and MIG welding. Buddy brought me a old buzz box, tombstone buzz box. So I'm determined to learn how to stick weld weld the heavier gauge stuff especially where it's going to be a shock load hung her up spray painted her just a flat or I should say a satin black 
it's been a little cold this winter so we were able to get this painted up and took a full 24 hours to dry so their gate keypad is wireless literally just three AA batteries and then programming it it's a learning system so you have to have an operational opener and you just set it up to learn the opening and that's it now all of the key codes that you want to enter up to 25 codes you can enter and it just fires right off so you saw us make the wireless keypad I use that 2x2 two 2 eighth inch tube and then literally just drove it about three foot in the ground using a uh, sledgehammer nice and sturdy really simple drove itself right in the ground but this is what our entrance looks like now I'm gonna go ahead and close the gate for you So the Mighty Mule is what we're using. One of the reasons I chose that is it has a Wi-Fi gate controller. I talked about that, that's located up in the house and it's got a separate antenna that ranges out and speaks to the gate. Had a little bit of problem with that, we're still working on it. We'll get back to you as to what we wind up doing. But that was the reason why we landed on this solution was there was a Wi-Fi application that would allow us to open the gate without having 110 volts at the gate. The, com the competition needed us to have 110 volt supply out here. So this is what it looks like. It's got the uh, lock on it, so it locks when it's closed, pedestrian lock. Right now we have both of our camera pods up here. You can see that was the uh, original camera pod that we made. Biggest thing I can tell you when you're making a camera pod is uh, vibration. If it's a little whippy up at the top, the camera picks up motion all the time. So you wanna make sure like with that one, we've got guy wires on it. With this one, we beefed it up a bunch and uh, we've made sure that the first point of movement, which is normally the solar panels collecting wind, they don't have any rocking on their own. We've also made them to where we can turn those solar panels into the sun and change our angle. Uh, right now, everything's kind of set for a summer angle or a mid angle, like 55 degrees. The other thing we've added, um, there is the biggest problem we had with our other gate controller was we couldn't get a reliable solution for vehicles leaving. Now we don't have this gate on automatic close, so it's open during the day and closed at night, but if somebody's visiting and it's closed, or if we've auto closed it and somebody needs to drive away, we have a magnet opener, a magnetic sensor in the ground that then has a wireless connection to the gate, allowing us to put the magnetic controller further away from our electric fence. So this has not given any errors. Before, with the Toppin system, it was opening itself after two hours of being closed. Now with this system, it needs to be permanently mounted. Um, it works really well, and it doesn't give any false readings. So that's what we've been working on. That's our security system. We can now close the gate from the house. We can give out codes. We can leave the gate closed permanently. We'll work through those things, but we've been testing with the Wi-Fi all the way out here. And if you look back at the house, that's full Wi-Fi signal at about 900 feet. So you'll see something confusing here. This says ghost controls. Uh, we thought that's what we were gonna go with, so we ordered their battery box. It's a double battery box. We wound up going with the Mighty Mule system. I ordered a generic 50 watt solar panel. Uh, we've been trying these Bing Fu um, antenna boosters. <clears throat> Not overly happy with them so far. In fact, I can tell you on the two gate cameras, we wound up going back to the Foscam proprietary <laughs> antennas. The Bing Fu's actually seem to do worse out here. But it's a pretty fast system, gives you an alarm when it opens and closes. It's been working great since we put it in. So we'll give you an update video later and see how long this thing holds together. Thanks for watching. This is our completed system at the front gate. Those security pods we can move wherever we want. 
I want to reiterate, you guys need to call Airstone for whole farm Wi-Fi. Great tech support. They'll even help you with some of this stuff, like working with camera systems. They're constantly testing. They're really interested in farm security and farm Wi-Fi. This has given us a freedom to be able to pull this whole project off. You got to call those guys. Airstone. Thanks for watching. Appreciate your time. Keep supporting us.